So how do you build a gaming PC when no one is selling any graphics cards? Well, one idea is to buy one of these. This is AMD's latest APU and it houses both a CPU and a GPU in the same ship. And it turns out it is actually quite powerful. So let's build a gaming PC using this ship and have a look at how it handles gaming. And I figured let's go through the whole building process from start to finish and then we have a look at the gaming performance in some of the most popular games. Now as always in case you decide to build this, all PC parts I've used can be found in the video description below. So spending about $485 gives you a PC build that is able to play a lot of games out there at 720p and 1080p with good frame rate. Now we're gonna dive into the gaming performance in greater detail a bit later, but just to give you guys an idea, here's what kind of frame rate you can expect in all the games I've tested, and we're gonna look at these benchmarks in greater detail a bit later. Anyway, inside this PC we find 16GB of RAM, a fast quad-core Ryzen processor and graphics on the same ship a 500GB M.2 SSD from Kingston, everything contained in this small form factor mini ITX Fantex case. Anyway, video timestamps can be found down below. Now before we get started, be sure to drop a comment, let me know what you thought about this video, drop a like if you enjoy the content, and make sure to subscribe to never miss an episode. So as always, I like to kick the build off with CPU, RAM and motherboard and for today's build we're gonna use the B550i Gaming Plus from MSI coming in at around $116. Now while B450 series chipsets are considered more budget friendly motherboards, this B450i from MSI you're pretty much getting the same features you get from a much more expensive X470 board, but for a much cheaper price tag. And the cool thing here is that the money we save here can be spent on a powerful graphics card once the market start meeting the demand again. With that said, let's take a look at our processor coming in at $99. This is the Ryzen 3 3200G. This is a 4 core and 4 thread APU with a base clock of 3.6 and 4 GHz turbo. Now, this APU ship offers fantastic gaming performance for its price tag, and it can run many modern games and upcoming games at 720p. But in many cases, you're actually able to run your favorite game at 1080p with low settings with good frame rate. And in case you decide to toss in a graphics card later on when things are looking better, you can expect pretty good frame rate without the CPU becoming too much of a bottleneck. As we can see, a motherboard comes with a retention frame pre-installed, but since we're gonna use a cooler with springs, we need to remove the retention frame from the motherboard. Now, installing the processor is quite simple. You wanna locate a golden or a yellow triangle on the processor. Now, this triangle lines up with the corresponding triangle on a motherboard socket. Simply turn the CPU so that the triangles match up. Then open the metal arm, drop the processor into the socket, put the metal arm down, and our CPU is installed. Now inside the CPU box, we also find a heatsink that is actually pretty good. And the cooler installment is also very simple. Now, before positioning the CPU cooler of the four spring screws, however, for optimal clearance, I recommend turning the frame of the heatsink 90 degrees, which, yeah, is held in place by four screws. And to get a hold of them, you first need to remove the outer frame. And with the outer frame turned by 90 degrees, we can install it. Now, if this is the first time installing the CPU cooler, it should already have some thermal grease pre-applied. And in that case, you don't need to apply some thermal grease on the CPU lid. Position the CPU cooler so that the four spring screws on the heatsink align with the four screw holes on the back plate. Once aligned, carefully place the heatsink onto the CPU. We're gonna use a screwdriver here and you turn each spring screw about half a turn clockwise to ensure that the spring screw makes a connection with the back plate. Then follow a diagonal pattern just like this across the CPU cooler to further tightening each spring screw with the full turn. And once all four screws have a connection with the back plate, tighten them up until you feel resistance. Then check the CPU cooler to ensure that it's uh, properly secured to the motherboard. Lastly, connect the fan power cable to the CPU cooler to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. 
Moving on to memory and we're going to pick these quality 16GB DDR4 sticks from Corsair rated at 3200MHz speed, 16GB meet the recommended requirement for most games in 2021 and it will be enough for quite a while. Now a fast memory kit such as these will give us a slight increase in FPS in game versus any slow clock kit as the way that these CPUs operates. A faster memory kit such as these will give us a slight increase in FPS versus let's say a slow clocked memory kit as the way that these APUs operates. Having faster clock RAM has a positive effect on the performance. However, it is important that you activate these so-called XMP profiling BIOS in order to enjoy this frame rate boost. And I'll link up a video down below that shows you how to do this. So simply pull back the toggle for both team slots and simply plug the RAM sticks in just like so. So let's install our M.2 drive and this particular one comes from Kingston. This is 500GB and it will cost you roughly $60 which is totally worth it. Now this drive is insanely fast and to put things in perspective. It is about 35% faster than a traditional hard drive so long lasting loading screen is actually a thing of the past with this one. So we want to locate the Ender 2 slot which we find right here located on the opposite side or we installed our CPU and RAM. And so what we want to do is we want to grab our motherboard box and we want to look for a small plastic bag that looks something like this. Now this bag holds the M.2 screw which we're gonna use to secure our M.2 drive. Gently slide the SSD unit into the socket just like so. Then take the tiny screw just like so, hold it down just like that and screw it down until it stops. And with that done, our actual motherboard assembly is ready to be installed in our case. And for today's build, we're gonna go with the Fantex Evolve ITX Tempo Glass model coming in at $80. Now the Evolve ITX is a budget-oriented chassis that uses a metal exterior that is complemented with a big tempo glass side panel. Now for cooling, we find a pre-installed 120mm fan at the rear, which is perfectly good enough for our PC build. The Evolve ITX doesn't include any RGB, but there is an integrated system already in place, so you can simply plug in let's say a set of RGB strips if you want if you like a little bit of customization if you've never built any mini PC case before you might at times feel a bit frustrated during the assembly because of the limited working space but trust me it is all worth it in the end anyway the first thing we have to do is we gotta prep the case and the first we do is we take off these four thumb screws holding the tempo glass Next thing we're gonna install our IO shield that we find inside our motherboard box and this one goes in for the back of the case with these yeah the circular audio ports located at the bottom. Grab onto the CPU cooler and slide the motherboard assembly into place. Now I strongly recommend having the case laying down as you're installing and securing the motherboard. Four screws are needed and we find all of this inside the accessory box that comes provided with our Fantex case. With the motherboard secured before we move on to the power supply, now is actually a good time to connect the chassis cables such as the front audio and USB ports as well as the power button and the LED and so forth. Let's start with USB 3 and this is what the connector looks like. And it goes all the way up to the right side corner of the motherboard. Next in line we have the front panel connectors and these goes to this location on the left side corner more specifically. Moving on to front audio and this one goes to a connector that is located right underneath the front panel connectors. So with that done, let's go ahead and install our power supply and I shows this 5 star rated 550 watt unit from Corsair. Now this is a compact and silent and high quality PCU with 80 plus bronze efficiency, meaning that it will run cool and quiet at all times, coming in at just under $60. Now this power supply is powerful enough to handle a mid tier GPU as well with no problems. And when it comes to critical things such as electricity, picking a high quality power supply is a no brainer in my opinion, as a cheaper PCU can destroy a complete gaming PC build in just seconds. Make sure you got the fan facing downwards then gently slide the PCU into place and secure it. 
So we're gonna do a couple of cables and wiring. And first up, we got the 24 pin power for our motherboard. And this one goes to the connector that we find on the upper right side. Next up, we got the 8 pin power for our CPU. And this one goes all the way up to the top left side corner. What is left to do is to flip the case around, spend a bit of time with the cable management, then whack on the side panel and we have officially completed our $485 gaming PC. And if you follow the video from start to finish, your system should power on. So let's fire up some games and find out how it performs. On your screen now, we're looking at the performance numbers that I've gathered from today's build and I ended up running 15 games I think and overall, I'm quite impressed with the performance you can expect from this $99 APU. Now as we can see some games you want to consider 720p where uh, as in some others, 1080p is definitely doable. Keep in mind you can always throw in a dedicated graphics card later on and expect much much higher gaming performance. But with that said, let's dive a bit deeper with some of the games being tested. First up we got CSGO and for this title I went with 1080p with competitive settings and this gives us an average FPS of over 130 FPS. Again, in 1080p, whereas in 720p you're gonna see frame rates over 200 FPS. Far Cry New Dawn however falls a bit behind and this has much to do with the game engine or we know that this one likes cores and threads and this is where CPUs like the 3200G who only have 4 cores can actually bottleneck the performance a bit. Division 2 is up next and here we see much healthier numbers, almost 50 FPS and 1080p and if you do an, a bit of overclocking here you can see numbers close to the magic 60 FPS mark. Shadow of the Tomb Raider we saw almost 60 FPS and 720p and about 35 FPS and 1080 so almost 50% reduction going from 1080p to 720p. GTA 5 however runs great on the 3200G with over 70 FPS at 1080p and almost 100 FPS and 720p which is fantastic results for again this $99 dirt cheap APU. What was said is yet another game that we saw fantastic numbers almost 60 FPS and 1080p. NDP. Fortnite also did great as we can see and I went with a mix between low and competitive settings here so viewing distance is set to 4 and 3D model uh, I think I set to 70 or 80% and this results in about 60 FPS on average in 1080p however if you decide to drop the settings to lowest you will see numbers close to the 3 digit mark in 1080p and 150 FPS in 720. Apex also runs great if you're willing to drop the settings down to 720p. 1080p might also be possible if you do some overclocking. And so again, very very impressive numbers. Now all PC parts can be found down below. I'm also starting up a Discord server and it would be fantastic if you guys wanted to join. And here we're gonna discuss PC parts and builds and if you're running into any issues, I'm going to hang out here and I'm gonna answer any questions you guys might have so you definitely wanna join up. you find the link down below. Now watch any of these two videos and I will see you guys in the next video.